And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Soraka Aphelios. We're going to try another version of Soraka and instead of playing Tom Kench, we're going to be playing um, the newest best champion in the game, Aphelios. Um, and Aphelios should work pretty well with this deck. We got some, you know, some different things that we can be doing with it, whether it's like keeping us alive with the lifesteal giving us some removal, because this deck's never really had that much removal, but giving it, so giving us some removal for followers with Calibrum, um, but then also having Crescendum to go get Boxtopus, right? Because Boxtopus is a great card with Soraka if you just have it naturally, because it, um, you know, it's going to be a 3-1. But then, of course, Crescendum getting Boxtopus is good as well. Now, we want to play Fortune Croaker with Soraka also, because the whole point of Soraka, right, like, you, we need to heal our damaged allies, right? So we need to have some allies that take some damage. And Fortune Croaker does a good job of damaging two different allies. But it's kind of messy, right? Because Fortune Croaker messes up our Crescendum for Boxtopus. But I think it's too good not to play. So we'll we'll kind of see how that works. But some there is probably going to be a time where we're going to cast Crescendum, hoping to get Boxtopus, and we get Fortune Croaker instead. Um... That's going to be a little messy, but oh well. Um, let's see. Of course, we're going to have our Star Spring uh, winning games for us if we can just kind of sit back behind our two champions, Aphelios and Soraka, and you know keep interacting with them, keep dragging the game out, having Star Spring help us win the game. Um, definitely need all three shakedowns to be able to give enemies vulnerable because this is kind of our removal for champions. Like it's basically just going to be shakedown and boxtopus. Because we don't really have too much else. We also have a Sunburst in here. Um, so the Shakedowns are going to be pretty important. Astral Protection to have another way of healing things. A Veiled Temple um, giving us extra mana and also making our allies larger. Always a good thing. And even like a Jack the Winner in here that can create some Sleep with the Fishes. So the Sleep with the Fishes um, deal damage to the Jack, which is good for our um, healing for like Soraka, Star Spring. Or, you know, deal damage to anything, really, right? It doesn't have to be Jack, but um, it's also a zero mana spell. And so making a zero mana spell helps cast multiple spells a turn for making moon weapons and also for getting extra mana with Veil Temple. So it does help with those cards also. So we got a cool little Jack the Winner in here, too. All right, so let's give it a try. We're going to try some Soraka Aphelios over in Ranked. Bringing back Soraka. Okay, a whole bunch of elusives. So how do we stop elusives? Um, this, you know, this thing healing for three each turn can be nice. But they can just kind of kill us in one shot. I'm going to try keeping the rest of these. It's, it's a little messy without having a one drop. <laughs> Lunari Dustbringer, what are you doing now? I would like to have you in a previous turn. I can still play Dustbringer and then Aphelios and then a Moon Weapon. Um, I think I'm just going to play Soraka instead, though. I am here to help. I am superior life form. Veil Temple. Man, I can't play that in the two other things this turn, can I? Night flowers upon my glades. Feel me in. Loop. Eyes open. I really hope we get Boxtopus. We have a 75% chance of getting Boxtopus because we have a Fortune Croaker in hand. I 
No, I should have grabbed Calibrum. I should have grabbed Calibrum. Oh, come on, really? 75% chance that we miss? Well. I should have grabbed Calibrum. Hmm. ideal I mean it's this probably means that we're dead right right now I think I gotta play broadback protector this turn okay good we're not dead at least not yet No, I couldn't play Temple. I have to get this round start heal Nexus thing going right now. I'm playing the Temple now. I'm always up for a round or two. Red Karn. Who says I don't share? Yep, I think we gotta go with the broadback. Oh, that levels up Fizz. Ah, <sighs> that's a mess. So I had to proactively use the Phil Cascade. We are not playing a tier one tournament deck. Because basically the reason why I want to play Hush is because then we get the Gravitum. Find peace in the quiet, it's just that it just doesn't doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Okay, Felio's fine. So Lunar Dustbringer is only good if we draw Aphelios. Otherwise, I don't want it at all. So I'm going to just go ahead and mulligan it with us not having Aphelios. We have the Star Spring. Okay, we got some other cards to kind of work with the Star Spring. Oh, 
That's not the best. I'll be able to get some gems. It's not the best. Every step, a new journey. Yeah, the the last few days we have been losing to lots and lots of burble fishes, like that that fizz twisted fate deck with with all sorts of silly decks that we play. Um, those zero mana elusives and just how aggressive all those that elusive deck is. It's it, it's really difficult to sit around and dirtle and um, try to win because they just they're just too aggressive. All the nexus damage with you know mystic shots and get excited and suit ups and everything. It's that's been a really difficult deck for us to defeat over the last few days. So my plan is to, you know, get the two cost follower and then also Calibrum, do both of those in this turn. We have six mana, we can cast three spells, you know, play that, play Boxtopus, and then play the deal three damage, the Mountain Goat. So if they do attack with Mountain Goat, I'll probably block with the Krusty Codger. Okay, so it is it is possible that we just can't play Fortune Croaker. Even though Fortune Croaker would be really nice to have in the stack, maybe we can't play it. I blocked with the two two. I should have blocked with the two three, because then that two the two two would have had an, an additional point that it could have got healed. So I can Astral Protection this Boxtopus and try to set the Boxtopus up to be 8 health. Can I paint you? But I think we're going to save the Astral Protection for the Soraka. Because I could see them like challenging with Vi on the Soraka. And that being pretty nice. Um... I could also see them challenging something over here and doing more damage to me with the Overwhelm. I think Zenith Blade's been the only spell they've played. Nine. 
Yeah, that's a pretty big buy. And I think it can, can keep getting bigger. I think. Yeah, it can get another plus three, plus zero. Later, Talamari. Wow. And I can't protect it. Playing this here, of course, to help out the Star Spring. Hopefully, this works. Eight damage. Please, no Bastion. No Bastion. Star Shaping. Well, how much was this thing damaged to begin with? Oh, uh, actually, probably a lot. Probably not enough for the box of us to kill it. Nope. Wow. Wow. That seems pretty greedy. Let's draw a hush. Let's draw a hush. Let's draw a hush. Let's draw a hush. We need to find Hush. So playing the other Soraka, help draw more cards. I still have the six mana for Astral Protection. As well as Guiding Touch. Take heart. Live with purpose. Yuck. Those are not Hush. Those are not Hush at all. They should be challenging the Broadback Protector. Never mind. I thought they were going to do that to try to go for lethal, but now they're going to just kill the Soraka. So my Star Spring's at 17. I can't believe that was so greedy of them to go get a Veiled Temple instead of destroying my Star Spring. It's the only way I can win. Not all of us. I was so greedy. Face me Stay strong. Oh. Almost had him there. We got a box plus. How about that? Oh, come on. Really? Falling Comet? Really? Okay. 
Mm. Am I spending mana on you? Because then I'll have two mana left. So I go... Bale Temple, Krusty Codger, Soraka's Wish. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, I mean, Hush is our only out. Actually, it's probably not good for me to play the Krusty Codger first. Come to think of it. But I only have one Hush, so it's not like, like it saves me for one turn. Besides that, do I have it? Okay, I only have one spell thief. Darn. That was the other thing. Is like, do we have another spell thief that we could spell thief the, you know, spell thief the uh, six mana obliterate? But well, no, we don't have that either. Um, they give the Aphelios overwhelm also. Then they have Hush defeated with both of those. Now, even if our Pill Cascade draws Hush, we cannot win anymore. Okay. So this is not going to be a good matchup for us because they put all the pop Like, this is a Puff Cap deck, putting a lot of Puff Caps in our deck. Our deck is trying to play a long game and draw a lot of cards, right? So Soraka really doesn't match up against Puff Caps. They also have the Elusives that we saw that we... Struggled with elusives. I don't like how this looks. Well, good start for them. Thanks, Box of Buzz. It's a Mystic Shot, I could double Pale Cascade, but that is pretty risky. What? Just want to get the brittle seal out of their hand. I guess because if that because if that didn't work, then whenever I supported, then you know they wouldn't be able to cast the brittle seal anymore, not have a three five, which would make troll chain a lot worse for them. So it was a good Brill Steel, because if they if they don't cast the Brill Steel, then then their Teemo dies there. Yeah, that was a good play that, um, you know, because they weren't going to be able to Brill Steal afterwards, so that was a good play. Ooh, Not one that 
It was an obvious play at all. That was a really good one. Really good play by the opponent. I am very glad they killed Soraka instead of Boxtopus. I feel like I have to sunburst this. I guess we could do this first and see how they keep... Yeah, we just do this first. See how they keep Teemo alive. So I can cast Dust Petal Dust and Shakedown. Don't want to waste my Shakedown. Because the problem is, like, how do we get 18 damage across before we draw all the puff caps? Okay, that worked out pretty well for me. Now this worked out really well. Because they, they threw an Ezreal out here without protection. Okay, so this is looking better now. Right, I'm supposed to nightfall card nightfall that thing. <laughs> Whoops. Winter take you. I really messed up that. Wow. We got the perfect card. I think I'll block it with a. F no, we just block these. We you do, you don't want to take any damage against this deck against this puff deck, puff cap deck. But now, this is looking very good for us now. And I even messed up that Aphelios by not playing the one drop first. Better lucky than good sometimes. I only get some luck turned around. That's alright. Nothing wrong with that. That just, you know, takes another card out of their hand, so I, I think that we're going to be winning this one. I feel very good about this one. Now. I mean, I guess, I think they were scared of, yeah, I think they were probably scared of Pale Cascade with not blocking um, Jack, that would be my guess. Alright, that was basically, you know, doing this to level up Aphelios. Okay, so this feels good. We got getting a win. Unless these two cards are like crazy good. I'll protect you. I promise the blood boss. So even like yeah, they could stay alive, right? Like a harsh winds keeps them alive for a turn. So it's not like we win right now, but I feel like just Overall, this is probably us winning. Light. 
And now we'll also grow the Broadback Protector there. Um, I'm not... I'm not really trying to cast these Guiding Touches and draw more cards and draw more Puff Caps right now. Um, yeah, I get, yeah, I don't... I'll play one. Okay, gotta win. Rest now, fell. Feel the moonlight's warmth. We got some LP. Anivia. We got some LP. Let's see. I wanna find our I wanna find our champion. We're just gonna send it all back. I wanna find our champions. I mean, Guiding Touch is pretty nice, though, but Star Spring was the other card I was trying to say. We want to find our champions and our landmark. So, Star Spring. Uh, good one to have. They forced us to choose death or the blade. These old eyes still see far and clear. Boo. Aphelios, Aphelios. Whoa. That doesn't usually work. This world has such great potential. All right, we're going to play the Aphelios on this turn. Make it so it's easier for me to like play multiple cards, have um maybe have astral protection still. Maybe not, maybe just play as Fortune Croaker. That's fine. Oh, I press. Maybe I should take Gravitum. One for the Star Spring. We're basically there. By starlight. Live with purpose. We have no Bastions, we have Astral Protections instead, so Ruination I can't stomp. Or Vengeance can't stomp. How do I damage my own units? <laughs> yeah, opponent's Anivia. So, you know, maybe they attack with some Anivias. But then again, Anivia decks also play, as we saw of their Vengeance, where they play Vengeance and Ruination and all those kind of cards. That is uh, just hard removal. They don't seem to have ruination, right? Because I think I don't think they would have played vengeance last turn if they had ruination. They probably would have just played ruination last turn. Nope, I'm wrong. They just had ruination. I should have just gone and attacked. Taking the pass instead of playing that box plus. Peace. 
They probably don't have another Ruination with 8 mana. No, stop. Ugh. These hard removal spells when I'm at I have all these astral protections. They're just playing hard removal. We're getting there. We are getting there. trying to sit back and win with these star springs right like that's that's our plan i definitely don't want to play another crusty kajra and let them ruination again they're digging This will be two, four, six. I'll make this seven. Hmm. Okay, we're over halfway there. Thirteen. It's, it's not about the damage like we're not like they have like nexus healing and everything too like we're not killing them in damage it's it's killing them with star spring so navy attacks are good for us so they're they're kind of in trouble right like they need like ruination or something they, they have to kind of use hard removal spells on our stuff because just a navy attacks aren't or like have to attack with like a whole bunch of anivias or something yeah we're we're in the driver's seat here This is actually turning out pretty well for us. It was a really good Jack the Winner draw when we drew that. Yeah, it's a very weird driver's seat, but we're in the driver's seat. Not one that we were expecting. Alright, that's the third glimpse beyond. I guess I want to get this moon weapon out of my hand, right? Well, we can just play it after this. Hmm. No, I guess I really shouldn't play. Yeah, I don't think I should play Aphelios. Because of... Like, basically, my opponent's best card is Ruination, right? And so, like, if I play Aphelios, then Ruination can really end this game. I do want to play Moon Weapons and get them out of my hand, both. Um, it's probably less likely that they have Ruination, though, with, with how they're playing. All right, we'll give it a try. Get 
know, because they, of course, have to block. Such naivete. That's just good for me. Yeah. That's just good for me. Where are we at? We're at 17. Yeah, so that, that just means we win. Alright, thank you for the Fury of the North. I appreciate it. They were trying to save their life total, I guess. That's what they are thinking, you know, save the life total. But it wasn't about the life total. Surprise! It was about the landmark. We're swimming in LP over here. 30. My opponent has 1,346, so that's quite a bit, but... We got 30. Don't... Don't underestimate 30. Alright, there was no champions, no Star Spring, so no keeping. Oh, yep, let's do predictions. Play go hard. No. This world has such great potential. We have three choices. Octopus. Pretty good card to draw, Boxtopus. Um, wouldn't necessarily be bad to play here, but I'm going to play this Broadback Protector instead. Um, but, you know, playing it you know, here would mean I'd have the Guiding Touch. Um, it does mean I'm probably not playing Jack next turn, right? Like, I'm probably playing Boxtopus next turn to be able to attack with Soraka and Boxtopus. I think that's my plan there. This is a lot of damage. It's going to be coming in. Our Broadback Protector will help heal our Nexus, though. So they did not attack with Elise because they did not want me... Even though they could have dealt two damage to me, they did not want me to be able to get a free block with Soraka. Be nice if we had Star Spring. Stars fall. Time to enjoy the night sky. Am I supposed to heal the Broadback Protector? I guess I probably am. Um... I know I'm not killing Elise. I know I could flip these two and kill the Elise. But I just like how they didn't attack last turn with the Elise, I like this. Like, I, I want them to attack with Elise and allow me to block with Soraka. That's something that I want to happen in life. So I'm not killing Elise. Yeah, I think so, Joker. I, it showed that our opponent had, like, 1,300 or something like that LP. A lot of LP. Okay, that Astral Protection is good for the Broadback Protector. Man, a Star Spring would have been great this game. Cloaks in silver light. 
Go, Soraka, go! Please don't have Hush. I guess Hush only turns this into a 2-7 anyway. All right, so it, it'd be nice to sleep with the fishes first. But the problem with going sleep with the fishes first is uh, then they can hush like the Soraka and the Soraka doesn't fully heal, right? Like if I go sleep with the fishes, they, they hush Soraka or use some kind of removal on the Soraka. I think since we have the action first, I think we just have to attack with Soraka, fully heal our Broadback uh, Protector. So it's probably just like one copy of, you know, the one copy of Aurelian Soul and then like an Eclipse Dragon. Got a lot of Pale Cascades. That's three Pale Cascades now. getting? Maybe Calibrum? Calibrum can't kill Diana. Calibrum can only deal damage to followers. I wish it could, but it can't. And of course, I'm playing that right now uh, to get the Gravitum. But we don't get to draw the extra card like Soraka would have. You know, like now we play Guiding Touch, we get to draw two cards. Surprised the surprised the flight didn't attack. A little surprised, but I guess maybe they just wanted on defense. I mean, I need to clear a spot. Like, I was definitely blocking. I need to clear a spot for the Star Spring anyway. Well, if they have Ruination, I still have both champions. Life's not that bad. And now our Star Springs at 18.
I guess it's Infernum. Just Crescendum, we just can't really play. I'm doing the Sleep with the Fishes after the Aphelios, so the Sleep with the Fishes is like my second spell for Aphelios making another moon weapon. Oh, but I have this other Infernum chilling in hand. Yuck. I gotta cast this thing. Ah. Ah, I should have played this one first. I forgot about this Infernum in hand. I should have played that first. Because then this Infernum could have... I could have had a second Crescendum, but I... Yeah. Yeah, I could have had a second Crescendum. But I'll have a second... Oh, I will get a second Crescendum. So it, it counts the second card, not the first one. How about that? Learn something new every day. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it is Crescentum. Yeah, never mind. I want, sorry, I want to grab it to him. So it was the first one. Okay. So we cast the two and it, it counted the first one, not the second one. Okay. So that is, okay, never mind. I thought this was Gravitum. Okay. So yeah. Basically, yeah. So it it's the first one whenever the phasing, not the second one. And I, I needed it to be the second one. Okay. This is Crescentum. Never mind. I don't need that card. Okay. Never mind. This was worse than I thought. All right. So they have four blockers. I have five attackers. Okay, so Aurelian Soul kills Soraka. Yeah, it's still right there. So we're at 20. Hey, Guy in Shades. Thanks for that resub. I appreciate that. That's our second sub of the day. Yeah, so I need to play... I need... I like. So basically, to, to sum it up, I had the Infernum and the Gravitum. And my Gravitum made a Crescendum. My Infernum, my Infernum was going to make another Gravitum. I led with the Gravitum because I forgot about the Infernum way over here. Where if I would have led with the Infernum, then I would have made another Gravitum. And then I could have gone Gravitum, Gravitum, and gone Stun, Stun. Um, and yeah, I would have stunned stun Diana for my other Stun. Um, so that's what I need to do. So I, I forgot that I had the Infernum in hand already whenever I cast the Gravitum. And so that's where I messed up. This game is not this game's not 100% over yet. No, we we have not won this game yet. leveled up early in soul if they if they find the thing like if they find something that obliterates my star spring then we're in trouble I'll protect you. I do love an audience. why can't you protect star spring bastion so like that's the game here do they have something that obliterates star spring Yeah, we have to be careful for a second, a second Aurelian Soul. Um, and yeah, that's that's something I need to consider with the the deal three damage, maybe deal three damage to like my own units. Some. No, so this this only wins the game at the end of the turn, at the end of the round, at round end. It does this. It doesn't just. I can't just like heal two and then boom twenty two. The game's immediately over. It's it's the round end. So, we got to survive this turn. You know, we gotta be worried about another Aurelian Soul and stuff. 
I don't think I have a better play besides just doing this right now, though, and just getting this to 22. And now stun. Yes, Crescendum. Okay, very good. They did not have an Obliterate Star Spring. Okay, so Soraka Philios really turned around. You know, we were down in the dumps. We lost our first two. We were all sad. Hopefully, y'all were still watching, though, because then we went on a nice winning streak and some good close games. Um, got lucky a couple of times. That's what it takes to, to win. Um, and uh, had some fun, and, and that was that was good. So that's what our, our deck's designed to do. Play Star Spring, win with Star Spring, and basically make it really tough for your opponent to kill you. Broadback Protector was a big part of like that last win. But just using Broadback Protector, using Jack the Winner. Jack the Winner looked really good. I would not mind at all some more copies of Jack the Winner. Um, Veil Temple actually didn't really look that good, considering we already had Star Spring, and um, you know, like that is getting to be a little bit too many of these uh, these landmarks. Like that's kind of a problem. And then um, you know, the plus one plus one and, and the refilling two mana. I don't know. Not all. You know, that wasn't always really that uh, you know necessary. It's not like we're using like large units to kill our opponent or anything. Um, but you know, having bigger blockers sometimes can can be nice. But I know, like, one of those games, you had Veil Temple, and it didn't look too good. So maybe maybe less Veil Temple, more Jack the Winner. Like, maybe you just switch those two, right? You just play one Veil Temple, two Jack, and if you have a Veil Temple, cool. You know, like, obviously, Veil Temple, very good with getting the extra mana for Aphelios. But if you don't have it, all good. Because, um, you know, we you only have six spots available on the board. But Jack was awesome. Those That Sleep with the Fishes was really cool. That was helping out. Um, but, yeah, like the Shakedown. The, the Fortune Croaker was the first two games. Um, it was unfortunate that we were using our um, two mana Crescendum to go put a two drop into play, and we were putting Fortune Croaker into play. And we were like, no, we wanted Pablo. Um, but, oh, well, that's that's life. That's that's what makes life entertaining. <laughs> got, got a, you know, it's sure, if you just, if you only have Voxopus, you know you get Voxopus. You know, throw a little excitement in life, right? Play some Fortune Croakers. Who knows? Maybe you'll get Fortune Croaker. And you'll be sad, but then you'll be more happy when you hit Boxtopus. You know, gotta gotta live with some excitement, right? Uh, but there we go. So that's Soraka Aphelios. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hit that like button, and uh, more importantly, leave those comments. Those comments on the videos really help uh, spread them with the YouTube algorithm. So I always appreciate them quite a bit. Um, if you have any, you know, any comments about the deck, if you play it yourself, have any questions on it, you know, anything like that, just Love seeing those. All right, but that's it for Soraka Aphelios. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.